Simple and Out is a wonderful in-out board with a lot of amazing features. We allow you to update your status from your phone or your desktop. Uh, maybe it's scheduling future statuses or running reports or receiving notifications right on your device when things are happening that you want to know about. But with all of these great features, we have to worry about which users have which permissions to do which things and uh, which users can see which things inside of your Simple and Out system. And so for that, we have roles. Roles are a way to group a bunch of permissions together into a role that you can then assign to users. Every user in Simple and Out belongs to a role. And as an administrator user, I can add more roles, take away some roles, edit the roles to get the permissions for those roles to work exactly the way I want them to. And then to make sure I can control which users belong to the role so I know which users have uh, certain powers within Simple and Out. So today we're going to talk about roles and we're going to talk about how to manage them and how to manage the users on them. So here I'm in our role manager and I, I was able to get here by clicking settings in the upper right and then I clicked on roles over here on the left. And as you can see, we have four roles to start with. These are the four base roles that we give you when you start Simple and Out. So, but in this case, what, let's, let us assume that we want to set up a role so that somebody in accounting can manage the billing just in case our credit card expires. But we don't want that user to be able to have access to absolutely everything else. Uh, so with, under that assumption, let's go ahead and create a brand new role. So I'm going to click the add role link here. And when I get into the role manager, first thing I'll have to do is choose the name. So I'm going to call this the accounting role because this is for our accounting department. And I'm allowed to choose right away if I want to make this role the default role for all new users. So if somebody goes to add a user, this one would be selected by default. In that case, that doesn't really make sense for me here. So I'm not going to check this box. So now by default, here are all the different settings that we have available. And we check a few by default just to give you a kind of a base. Uh, but you can go from there. So here you're allowed to view all users. Um, and you're allowed to view the status update time. So view all users, this is under the board section. This is whether the user can actually see the board. If you uncheck this box, users won't even be able to see the board. Uh, they won't be able to see other users in the company. They'd only be able to do things like maybe update their own status. Um, you can choose whether or not they can see the last updated times or whether you don't want them to be able to see what time the status updates were made. Um, and then for current status, whether you can update your own status. So in this case, our, we're in the accounting department. I, I'm okay with them seeing the users in our in-out board, of course. I'm definitely okay with them managing their own current status because I want them to be able to make changes. I don't want them to be able to change statuses for others. I'm going to assume I don't want that. So I'm going to leave that off. And then we have status history. Can they change their own status history? Can they go back in time and make changes for things that have happened in the past? Or can they change the status history of other people? Now, this is great if you're running payroll and you need people who can correct the record. In this case, I'm accounting and I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to leave those off. But I'm going to view the status history of others. I'm okay with leaving that on uh, just because that's, that's no big deal for me. Um, and then run reports. Can this user run reports on other people? Uh, I'm going to leave this off as well uh, just because, again, I'm only really worried about this person being able to manage our billing details. I don't really care if they run reports on others. I don't want them to be able to do that. Um, so then we have scheduled statuses. Uh, you know, can they manage their own scheduled statuses and add future statuses that get applied automatically? Uh, we have another video on scheduled statuses. Um, I'm going to leave these as, as, as they are as well. And then notifications. If you have a plan, one of our pro plans that does notifications, then you can choose. Can the user follow, you know, get followed user notifications? Can they manage reminders for other users? And can they also receive safety notifications? So these are the features of notifications on their devices. And you can choose which users can use them. Uh, again, I'm going to leave these all alone because all the way down here in company, that's the one I was after for this hypothetical, manage billing details. So, and you can hover over any of these question marks to see exactly what's going on. These users can change the company's plan, the company's credit card and invoice email information. So for my accounting and people, this is perfect. This is exactly what I want them to be able to do. So I'm gonna check this box and say, that's okay. And then I'm gonna click create role. So now I have a new role, the accounting role and the accounting role has no users in it right now. Um, and I can edit it after the fact. So if I click the edit button on the accounting role here, I'm back into accounting where I can see exactly what's going on. I could delete the role if I'm unhappy with it. But in this case, I'm just going to go back. And uh, this is exactly what I was after. So now I need to put somebody in this accounting role. So I'm going to fly back out to our in-out board by clicking just on the name of the company here in the upper left. 
And once I'm up here then, I'm gonna go ahead and say, Kevin Johnson must be in our accounting role. So I'm gonna click on Kevin, and then I'm gonna click on the edit button in the dialogue that comes up. Now, while I'm editing Kevin here, you'll notice here's his role, and he's on the regular user role. So if I click on this, now I have the accounting role, and I can say, here's the accounting role. If I forget what this role does, I can click this little I button here, and this will tell me everything the user can do. And as you can see right here, user in this role can manage billing details. That's exactly what we were after. So this is perfect. Now Kevin can change our credit card if the uh, need should arise. I'm gonna click update user. And now we're all set. So now Kevin has a different set of permissions. He can do all of those different things that were on that particular role. One final note I'm gonna make before we uh, close our video today, as I go over here and I click back on our role manager, I wanna draw special attention to the administrator role. So the administrator role is a special role. You cannot delete the administrator role. And there must always be one user that is on the administrator role. So if I click on edit here to edit the administrator role, you'll notice we get this special message. This is a special role and the most of the permissions cannot be edited. Now, if I wanna see who's on this role, I can see there are two users up here and I can click the show button and that'll tell me exactly which users are on this role. So in this case, Mark Leonard and Sarah Smith, I'm Sarah Smith in this case, are administrators. And you'll notice that the administrators can have very little. So you can turn off the status update times. So that administrators even cannot see status the time that updates were made on the board. We can do that from here if we wish. Um, you could also disable followed user notifications and safety notifications. Even if you're an administrator, if you just want to shut those features off so that even other admins can't use them, you can do that here if you wish. But the rest of the features are locked on the on position. And that's because as an administrator, somebody has to be able to manage these things. And if you're an administrator, then that's the plan for you. Um, you want to make sure that you only add people who are administrators who you trust implicitly. And the biggest reason why is because administrators are allowed to manage users, manage the roles, as well as do things like delete the entire organization, which is irrecoverable. So you only want to make sure that administrators are people you trust the utmost. So that's roles, a great way to be able to lump all these permissions together into a role that you can easily assign to users to make managing what users can do a lot simpler.